Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to another episode of BIM After Dark Live. This is episode 75. My name is Jeff, also known as the Revit Kid. For those of you that are new here, welcome. This is a weekly live stream where we talk about Revit, BIM, and pretty much anything adjacent uh, to that aspect of architectural engineering uh, and construction. Um, we have an awesome guest today. We're going to be talking about IFC and Open BIM and some of those ideas. And uh, it's one of those things that I'm super excited to talk about, uh, mainly because I don't think it's talked about enough. Um, so my guest, Conrad from BIM Corner, is, uh, is, is going to break down from the very beginning of, of sort of talking about what IFC is. And then we're going to do some live demo of how to export properly and do's and don'ts of Revit uh, exporting IFC. So super excited for that stick around uh before we jump into introducing our guest today i wanted to remind everyone that we are live so uh it's 12 30 eastern uh for me so it's not really after dark technically but uh but for you maybe uh you're somewhere in the world where it is so thanks for joining but feel free to ask questions i'm going to be checking an eye uh keeping an eye on the chat the whole time um and and feeding them in um to our conversation as we go along and then finally, before we jump into it, I do want to thank our sponsor for this episode. Episode 75 is sponsored by Twin Motion. So for those of you that don't know what Twin Motion is, um, if you've followed me for a while, you probably do because I, I absolutely love the tool and I have, I don't even know, four or five videos uh, recently on, on the channel uh, about how to use it and different, uh, different ways to use it. But uh, it is a real-time rendering program that runs on the Unreal Engine and uh, uh, has some fantastic features, especially in the 2022 release, uh, like Path Tracer, Sky Dome, um, uh, Presentation Mode, uh, cloud presentation mode, uh, you name it. I've got some great uh, walkthroughs of how to get from Revit into the environment. And what I'm doing to sort of highlight this um, little sponsorship is highlighting a couple of the features that I like the most um, here on the stream. So the feature I want to talk about today is just how quickly and easily uh, you can build scenes uh, within Twin Motion. So what I'm doing here is I'm just simply using character paths and, and vehicle paths to, to fill in a scene. That's a Revit model there. Um, and just by clicking a couple areas and adding, um, adding a path, it's automatically adding um, uh, animated people, cars, and you name it. And you can see you could change the density, you could change the, the amount of people, and so on and so forth. So by doing this, uh, you can quickly place things like people, plants, cars, um, and really build your, your world uh, around your scene. Um, for those of you not familiar with real-time rendering, um, this is one of the big benefits, is that you get to sort of build your entire world, and then you're basically just taking pictures of it to make your visuals. And you see what I'm doing here is how fast I can add cars and people and plants, and they're all animated and they look great. Um, I'm also gonna show you vegetation scatter, which scatters vegetation across a single material. So I'm placing a bunch of trees uh, in the middle of in the middle of this little space here and so on and so forth and so really quickly um you can you can develop a scene you can create renderings um and you can make a a full fully realistic uh virtual scene for whatever your needs are so um with all that being said i want to thank twin motion for sponsoring this episode and for those of you uh who support this channel make sure you head on over to twinmotion.com slash bim after dark get a free trial try it out um, fully functioning free trial and uh, check out all the new features i'll also link down in the description my reviews and my free um, from revit to twin motion course all right so with all that being said uh, I, I noticed a couple people in the chat joining in. I think the 1230 time was helpful to some who haven't been able to join us when I did the 9 p.m. time zone. So I appreciate some some returning folks from from overseas that I know uh, 9 p.m. Eastern doesn't work for you guys like in Portugal or oh, Ricardo's back. How's it going? Um, Joel, a few others. Uh, welcome, guys. Welcome. OK, so let's jump into it now. Um, I'm going to introduce our guest uh, and uh, and we'll jump right into the content at hand. Conrad. How's it going, man? Oh, hi. Um, they, they see and great. hear you now. I know that was a little long. You're probably sitting there like, am I being watched yet? I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah, it's that, never as exciting great. for the guests until you watch it back. You don't get to see all the cool graphics. I apologize. Or the music. Yeah. I, sh I should figure out how to at least yeah. get the music to feed to you. 
I, I was like uh, looking a little bit on uh, on the YouTube on uh, other okay. screen. Okay, so. so you get to see that little <laughs> delay that we have too. Which yeah, yeah, really yeah. Confusing. <laughs> well, thank you, Conrad. And, and it, actually, it's Conrad Fugas. Did I pronounce? I, I yeah. forgot to ask you before Fugas, we jumped yeah. on. So t Conrad, yeah, yeah. Uh, Conrad, um, actually. The way we, we connected is sort of a, a few audience members said um, that I should reach out to BIM Corner, uh, that, which is the blog and website you guys have uh, with some fantastic content. Um, and, and sort of that's how we've connected to talk about this topic. So thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Before we jump into IFCs, I guess maybe um, give everyone a quick little uh, overview of yourself and, and who you are and, and a little of your bio so they know uh, where you're coming from. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, cool. Uh, thanks for inviting me, and uh, it's really I'm really glad to to come here. I was uh, watching some of your of your videos beforehand, uh, like Revit tutorials and some mm. Beam After Dark. So it's really nice to be on the other side as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and to share something uh, something cool for I hope uh, you and your audience will like awesome. uh, about myself. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm Konrad Fugas. Uh, I'm um, I was raised in Poland. Um, in the small town uh, southeast of Poland, near the border with Ukraine. Then uh, I was studying in Warsaw, on the Warsaw University of Technology. I was studying civil engineering, so I'm not an architect, but uh, rather a structural engineer uh, from the background. And um, after studies through the student organization called IESTE, I got an uh, opportunity to come to Norway for an internship. Um, so that's how I ended up in Norway, and it's been uh, almost six years now uh, living in this country. Uh, I'm based in Oslo. Uh, it's almost getting dark soon, so so <laughs> maybe in a half an hour we're gonna have a beam after dark. Yeah, one of us will have uh, after dark, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, at least. <laughs> awesome. uh, yeah. So I first started to work on a general contractor company. So there was little beam, but uh, a lot of new interesting stuff for, for uh, on the site and uh, cost uh, and quantity estimation etc hmm. but uh, then i got like i was like you you know like this if you've been doing quantity surveying on the on the, those pdf drawings you were like drawing this on the screen of your computer and i was like oh jesus christ it's 21st century and i will still doing it <laughs> there has yep. to be a better way so mm -hmm. uh, then i found Solibri and i was like okay that's cool uh, so you can do quantity surveying really, really fast. And, um, and then I, I just dived into, started mm -hmm. to learn Solibri, started to learn about Beam, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, switched a company to, um, to a software uh, vendor. They are doing some um, database solution, like strictly connected with Beam. Mm -hmm. It's called Eurofus. I think they might be, some people maybe know them from um, United States. They are mm -hmm. um, heavy in Scandinavia and a little bit also in the US. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, where I was consultant working with uh, building owners on an uh, interesting project, big projects, beam projects. Um, that was really, really, really interesting and like giving. Mm -hmm. And now I switched to my current work that I'm working as a, it's called digital collaboration coordinator. It's a little bit more than beam coordinator because mm -hmm. it encompasses all the communication, every data flow that goes digitally on the project. Mm -hmm. And I work in on a um, construction of Stavanger University Hospital, a 120,000 square meters hospital. I have no clue how many feet it is. <laughs> So, it's big. That's big. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All we need to know is it's big, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So that's um, short about myself. Awesome. So um, great. So uh, so yeah, I'm I'm yeah. I'm excited and uh, and and actually it's interesting that that I didn't realize that uh, initially uh, you sort of started the general contracting uh, side of it and sort of moved around there. Because I do think uh, when when we started talking about potential topics and what we how we can frame this, um, I was excited to talk about IFC mainly because, for for personally, I think a good reason. Um, there's a lot more conversation around this idea of open BIM and interoperability and and you know how 
how we can work cross platform and share this information. And I think that's a great thing. Um, so I think the timing mm -hmm. is perfect. And I think, um, you know, I'm excited to hear more about that. And I think it's funny that you mentioned, you know, general contracting sort of get being your eye opening, because it is when you start dealing with, um, you know, more than just the design team, for example, yeah. and you reach out um, to consultants, to contractors, to subcontractors, you start realizing there's a lot of programs out there um, that are doing a lot of yeah. great things. And how can we make them talk to each other? And so I think with that, um, again, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. So guys, feel free to ask questions. Maybe we just jump right into, um, you know, what we, we already talked a little bit about yourself. So maybe we'll jump right into IFC and sort of, uh, you know, what is it? Why, you know, give your little introduction to help everyone sort of set the context yep. of, of, of the importance of this thing. So uh, I think you got a little bit of a slide deck and then we're going to do some demo. Um, so, so feel free to jump in. Let's do this. Yep. So uh, let's go. Um, yeah, let's start with a little short uh, agenda. Um, so I actually already said about uh, myself, my job. And uh, yeah, Beam Corner is a blog that six of us, we are based uh, in Oslo. Um, you will see some links and uh, we talk about Beam and uh, uh, really different subjects because mm -hmm. we cover like a lot of um, a lot of uh, broad spectrum of, of what's going uh, in a beam technology so i encourage you to to jump there um then i will in a few words say, uh, explain maybe why beam is so advanced in scandinavia and especially in norway then uh we will get straight into ifc and uh, what it is why we are using it uh for what then it's going to be some uh, demo in Revit, how to set up IFC exporter uh, in Revit. And in the end, uh, some IFC export do's and don'ts. So like quick, quick tips and uh, further read if you're interested. Awesome. So uh, yeah, this slide I can basically skip. Uh, this is where I work. This is my project. This is Beam Corner and this is me. Uh, yeah. So why is BIM so advanced in Scandinavia? Um, well, so Norway being sitting on oil, of course, it's a well-developed and rich country. And that means that the hourly rate of a designer and everybody basically in this country mm. is high in comparison to the software license cost. Mm -hmm. So the employers are pursuing more, more for effectiveness uh, of, of their worker to, to work like faster and better in, uh, and it doesn't that the license costs are not that high in, in comparison to that one. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing. And the other thing is that the government uh, receiving uh, money from oil are investing a heap of money into public buildings mm -hmm. to like raise the standard of livings. So there is a lot of public uh, hospital buildings, public uh, cultural centers, museums, roads, tunnels, bridges, etc. And those tenders run by public organizations, uh, they see a high value in using BIM. And since the tenders are mostly um, best value procurement and not where, where the price is not like deciding factor. Right. So there, is, there are always points for innovations and new method of working, etc. Mm -hmm. And so that's why BIM is being really well valued and people uh, and like those organizations, those public uh, building owners are uh, really um, pushing into, mm -hmm. into uh, developing BIM. And why IFC in this BIM? It's because the tendering law forbids excluding any company from tendering and requires the same rights to bid and access to information. Hmm. So building owner basically cannot require uh, delivering files in RVT ah. because that would exclude architects mm -hmm. working in Archicad <laughs> or structural engineers working in Tecla, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So the, the tendering law uh, says that um, it has to be in IFC because this is open standard. Like mm -hmm. documents you deliver in PDF mm -hmm. and not in Word or, or pages or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Because this that's, is also, yeah. that's 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 an interesting point. I mean, you and I were talking before we jumped on about sort of, um, you know, my experience with IFC here in 
in North America and in, in USA um, and and how I feel like most of the audience probably that, that at least uh, are here around here uh, we are sort of probably sitting in the Revit bubble and we're accepting IFCs from people because they maybe are using different software um, but that's an interesting thought and, and I and believe you know, most of the bidding that you see around here is owners actually writing Autodesk Revit into the into mm. the bids and so it's interesting that and, and it makes sense that <laughs> to be you know you know more competitive and, and to open it up it would make sense but it's kind of funny mm. that around here it's been it's almost like BIM and Revit are the two you know are the same thing to most owners um and and and, mm. and whereas you're you you know you just mentioned sort of you know well what if you're using ArchiCAD what if you're using Vectorworks yep. what if you're using CAD you know Cat, bricks cat or whatever, whatever right? yeah. all of those things you know you're, you're you're eliminating people that may or you're forcing them to use a program that they're maybe not as efficient with is the other side of it right it, it, yeah so, exactly so exactly that's, so that's, that's, that's fascinating course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it also course, it also okay. makes sense for why ifc is so important now right because once mm -hmm. you do that you need a file type that can be you know usable in any of those programs which is pretty yeah. pretty cool it's like more focusing on the information side than right than Mm -hmm. what provides that information mm -hmm. awesome. um yeah so uh, what is ifc uh it stands for industry foundation classes and this uh the standard was created uh, by a non-profit organization uh, called nowadays building smart and first ifc uh, was released in 1997 so that's pretty old one yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the schema is, is pretty old. The newest official version is IFC 4 from 2013. But uh, in industry, the broadest used is previous version, IFC 2X3 mm -hmm. from 2007. And uh, I will focus on this one because this is the one that basically almost 100% of, of use cases nowadays. How, how, new, how is, new is IFC 4, you said? 2013 2013 okay uh but there are still uh this is the last official one but they're working on ifc 4.3 like the mm -hmm. third release and mm -hmm. uh, but it's under development so it, it should be i think next year or something released got it uh ifc is like written or defined in iso standard so it, it's the same as for example pdf it's an open standard defined in iso mm -hmm. And now it's getting harder. IFC is a semantic schema. It defines the way building data is described and inherited. In a way, it is a data model that helps computer to understand how different building parts relates to one another. And um, yeah, I, as the name suggests, it consists of classes and that describes everything inside a schema. So uh, a class in IFC is a wall, for example, like IFC wall, uh, it's a class, but IFC also defines more abstract terms like tasks or costs. So basically IFC schema uh, has uh, entities or classes that define the whole spectrum of construction project from early design, finishing on facility management. And uh, yes, IFC is complicated. <laughs> it's <laughs> complicated. <laughs> and uh, but it just has to be. It's like, because IFC translates every part, every hierarchy and dependency from a construction world into computer understandable format. Mm -hmm. So just, just think of it uh, like doors behind me. We, we know it's simple doors, right? But for computer, it has different material, maybe a cutout for a, for a glassing, uh, but it all opens. It opens from the left, maybe from the right, inward, mm -hmm. outward. Um, they have to sit in a wall and you cannot place one door next to another door, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you see, there is more and more dependency and th those were only doors. And now you put on walls, beams, slabs, uh, installations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those all interdependencies uh, are so complicated uh, and so huge. That's why IFC is is really 
quite complicated to understand from the from the bottom but thankfully we don't have to to work with it Got <laughs> so, it. <laughs> yeah so yeah that was um uh, yeah how, how it is built up but thank thank god we we don't have to know how it works how it is all related mm -hmm. to know how to use it got it um uh, yes yeah, so, so mm -hmm. just to uh to sort of build on that as as a revit minded individual uh you know that's where i spent most of my time and to continue mm -hmm. to um and i'm hoping maybe this helps for people out there who have the same yep. mindset um you know i think the idea of, of of building information being attached to model elements is something that you know anyone using a bim program can understand but i guess the the key point that you mentioned there is is by being sort of in, in a standard class and talking about even the example where you said creating um you know uh, competition or, or fairness about bidding and all this stuff is by um, the idea is you and you know myself using Revit you know I understand that if I click a door in most Revit models you're going to see the door um, tag the door or the, the door to mark the size the elevation the like you said the swing like all those things can be mm -hmm. built in there but what IFC is is it's taking that whatever format whatever format you decided in your lovely template in your office and it's saying this is the standard format that the information needs to be in for these specific elements in order to be shared across across platforms and across the world right so this somebody in Ar archicad for example even though they may have their little lovely standards for their you know local version of the model when you know i have what ifc is telling you is that that's fine but these are the this is the standard ver way of of documenting the information that you need to use once it comes out of it right is that is that kind of yeah. is that kind of the, the the idea yeah that, that, that's correct like uh you translate what's proprietary for a format mm -hmm. to something that is open and that is understandable for all other software mm -hmm. so uh yeah it, it's um yeah like parameters in revit it's the same as attributes in ifc so mm -hmm. ifc door has also like a swing, et cetera, et cetera, all, all those, all those attributes. Mm -hmm. They, they are mapped together, translated to one another. Mm -hmm. That's why the door in Revit is the door in IFC mm -hmm. and it opens hopefully the same direction. Yep. Yep. Awesome. So, so uh, there was a, there was an interesting question in the chat while, while you were introducing the idea, which is, um, um, would you consider IFC an export format or an import format or is that the wrong question to ask is my addition to that <laughs> <laughs> uh no no that, that's a that's a good question i would consider it an export format and okay. i will talk about it a little bit later why okay awesome all right let's do this Mo moving on <laughs> uh, yep sure um okay then uh, next one why do we use it and this is a little bit dependent of, of on, on our construction branch uh, here is a small infographic uh, I have. So why is the best way to exchange data? And our our projects, like our branch supply chain is fragmented into countless small suppliers and subcontractors and subcontractors of subcontractors responsible for only a tiny little part of the contract. So uh, this differ construction projects from, I don't know, software uh, uh, software projects or consultancies that our uh, our branch is really fragmented and they all need to share information. Also, our progress, our projects have a long duration and that favor a usage of an open standard since no company so far was able to create a format that covers the whole spectrum of a building life cycle. Revit might be, uh, Autodesk might be close, but they're still missing on some links mm -hmm. to, to cover the full specter of, of the life cycle. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, no software can do everything. Um, and also for IFC, nobody has to pay a license for using that file format. Mm -hmm. If you want to use DVG, you have to pay Autodesk for, for that format. If you want to use uh, PLN from Archicad, you have to pay Graphisoft. But IFC is open for everybody. Um, it's non-proprietary format, proprietary, yeah, the one. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody can use it and uh, you don't have to have a license to, to use that format. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, uh, IFC is so developed in, into our branch that 
an overwhelming majority of software pieces can translate their native objects into IFC classes. Um, yeah, and that's the basically only way to exchange data between different uh, companies and softwares. Um, what is also good, it's that subsequent version are backwards compatible. Uh, and that is in contrary to proprietary format. We all know how it is to open Revit 2021 in Revit 2020. <laughs> uh, in IFC, it's it's possible, mm -hmm. uh, at least in a, in a mi minor releases. Mm -hmm. um, it is, in general, non-editable format. It can be edited, but in general, is non-editable. That secures the intellectual property of the creator. It's like a PDF of BIM in a way, mm -hmm. um, and can be re referenced in a, in a numerous other software pieces that can like just clip in the IFC, IFC file. And um, like using this, um, this metaphor of PDF of BIM, uh, we all use PDF to like read the documents that we create in Word pages or whatever. And I wish IFC is the, the same popular as PDF are. Mm -hmm. It's not, and because it is much easier to export Word document to PDF than it is an Revit or whatever file to IFC. Mm -hmm. There is, it is unfortunately quite complicated to do it right. There are a lot of pitfalls to avoid and uh, special practices to follow. Uh, I'm gonna show you some of those. Um, there are some guidelines, but still the industry struggle to to like get it get it uh in a in a small finger because it's not easy and and right. it, it's really not <laughs> <clears throat> awesome. um, so, so yeah. there was there was one question uh in the mm -hmm. chat which is um um what uh sorry uh -huh. ifc is an xml file structure is that correct or, or is um that, i'm not sure i, I mean <laughs> i guess uh yeah, is, is IFC an XML file structure? Is that a correct statement I'm, or no? <laughs> I uh, I think it is. At least you can export the file to IFC XML. Right. So uh, right. yeah, it's it's it can be opened in Notepad. It and can it be opened in it. There we go. I was just gonna say yeah. So it can be opened in it, but you know it's the same thing with the whole. And we don't need to go down this today, but the whole Kobe idea of of mm. Kobe is not a spreadsheet. It's you know the the data and you're just viewing it in a spreadsheet. I think it's the same idea. All right. So I think uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think we've set up a great uh, foundation for for you know what it is uh, and talked a little bit about the benefits so may maybe it's time now to talk a little bit about process and like you said the, the do's and don'ts and 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 if again uh, knowing that most of my audience here will be revit users uh and and the mm -hmm. idea here yeah. is if we're thinking and maybe 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 we can jump into the export now because maybe there's a little bit of time to talk about the idea of export versus import and sort of what yep. um you know now that we have an IFC, you know what? Let's what what can we do with it? But so maybe we should jump right into the to the the do's and don'ts, the pitfalls, and the process of um, exporting from Revit to an IFC, uh, so that it's a useful file for others. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Then uh, I can open uh, Revit. Yeah. Let's and do it. Uh, we can uh, jump right in. This is uh, some basically generic building and. Uh, let's me. So everything, it starts in, um, yeah, IFC and Revit. Mm -hmm. So um, the thing is that IFC is much broader than Revit. So uh, there is much more IFC classes than Revit categories. So we have to map them together. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Autodesk comes with a predefined uh, mapping table, but it is not always accurate and it is good to check it and to uh, redefine it and uh, everything happens here file uh, export and uh, here we do the export but first we go to options hmm. ifc options uh before uh, you jump into that, i did i did have a quick question about the yeah the, pre the predefined um in your experience um you know with let's say Archicad, Revit, and I don't know, maybe we say Vectorworks, so let's just pick, you know, sort of threes. Um, 
the I know they all kind of have predefined or they try to have predefined uh, paths and connections with with the the, the attributes. Um, in your experience, are, are those aligned across software well enough, or you're still? Um, I guess what I'm saying is like the the predefined connections with let's say ARCHICAD doors and then Revit doors to where they're going in IFC. Are you seeing that that's kind of aligned enough, or there's still no matter what you're you're still checking? You know, you're, you're, there's there's still a little bit of a displacement between um, maybe like the predefined settings of maybe ARCHICAD and the predefined settings of Revit. Um. I, I mean, generally, it, they 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 produce the same. They produce okay. the IFC doors. It's mm -hmm. all in the details. In a, actually, yeah. the 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 most the most challenges comes with the data. How many? How much data do we want? Yeah. How how not? How mm -hmm. it is structured? Uh, is it too much or not, or not enough? Mm -hmm. It all comes to like in more in more details. But uh, in Got general, it. from from this you can. I could export this right now without any any uh, settings, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Right, right. You're just but refining then, uh, it now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, maybe I asked the question wrong too, because now I'm thinking about it. I guess the question then is, um, when you're refining these these this data like you're doing now, uh, do you find that the refinements are similar regardless of the program? As in, like you know, the the like you said, the detail that you're adding to it. Do you see? Do you find it's kind of the same? So like we're talking about Revit right now, but would you probably end up doing very similar refinements in a different program when you're exporting? Um, they work pretty differently. Okay, uh, that, that's all. I was I was just curious. <laughs> if, I was just curious if if you know if 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 the idea you know that if mm. these predetermined attributes that these software companies put in, if there's enough relationship that you know you can you can sort of see it. But I guess you know, like you said, the, the data side of the software will. Yeah. will Will tell okay I, I i would say as far as i know that archicad is still like requires the least like tweaking mm -hmm. to to get to get a nice uh ifc ifc expert got it um but revit is also a, a massive because it's all the mep mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is where the problem begins like here got it building element proxy says not nothing to us it's mm -hmm. it's an IFC class that means nothing, and it can be everything. It it can be electrical equipment, but it can also be uh, um, I don't know medical equipment or or whatever. Mm -hmm. So those are, for example, the classes that we should define mm -hmm. in uh, as an IFC schema to have it correctly. Instead of IFC building element proxy, we should have uh, yeah we should find in uh, in a standard like uh, in this ugly page <laughs> of the this is the technical uh, documentation of IFC 2x3 and if we go to alphabetical listing entities and we will find electri electrical yeah now we have um, electrical appliance type etc etc so we want we need to find which IFC entity uh, fits us and then uh, put it into mapping table or export it as that IFC class. Mm -hmm. um, but is, this is hopeful, uh, thankfully one time job. You mm -hmm. have to set it up in the project, go through it once. And our architectural, uh, architectural categories are uh, well defined. The problem mm -hmm. starts a little bit with MEP. Got it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the way to start, the place to start. After and we so, have it set so it that up. there was a question in the chat, which I think you just sort of started to answer, which is once you set this up, it it um, it saves these settings in the project, and it looks like you can also save as if you need to pull it into into another project. So, yeah. to your point, if you have a pretty solid standard of your Revit files and templates, and people are sticking to it, um, this is something that uh, you know you could potentially only have to do you know once or twice mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> here and there, which is great. Uh, yeah, and if you mess this table up. You can just click standard and and it refreshes it. Awesome. And that table again for people who missed it was under file options yep. um, uh, and and uh, file export. Uh, export down at the down at the very bottom options. options and then IFC options, IFC not options. file export IFC. You have to do this before you go no. to file export IFC. <laughs> you just mm. want to make sure everyone saw that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first step. So and then we are getting to exporting the. IFC file. 
So we have our model, we have a file name, we click modify setup. And here we have a bunch of options to choose. Those are called model view definitions, and those are kind of a filters put on IFC schema to produce the result uh, that corresponds with, the, um, with what we want to get. The most popular is this one, IFC to X3 coordination view 2.0. This is an official uh, MVD uh, created by Building Smart and is used, as the name suggests, for coordination purposes, mm -hmm. but it is also uh, helpful for archiving or as a, as a hand, uh, handover. So we will use this one, but we will tweak it a little bit because as you see, I cannot change anything because this is like a standard MVD. So, um, so we cannot change it, but we can just uh, create a copy and uh, we can beam after dark, BAD. That's a great uh, shortcut, by the way. <laughs> um, and here we go. So IFC version, as I said, we choose this one. File type, we can choose IFC, IFC XML, IFC zipped. That takes a little bit less place uh, on a disk. Mm -hmm. Handy for bigger projects, but we go for IFC. Face, default face is the last one. Um, in the project space boundary this um, this a little bit uh, defines how space boundaries are exported and this is used for various quantity takeoffs and calculations let's leave it none coordinate base and uh, I don't know if you had an uh, uh, episode about sh coordinates and shared coordinates uh, mm -hmm. this is another type of mess uh, <laughs> oh yes oh yes <laughs> we had yeah. uh, I had <laughs> I had Nick on from uh, from Pure Revit. Uh, got it. It's almost two years ago now, uh, and we talked about nothing but coordinates. And so I'll link that below as well. But yes, it's a mess in Revit, and I'm sure it's just as much of a mess in IFC. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's you have to choose like the one you you, you right. basically use mm -hmm. uh, in in your project. So if you use shared coordinates, use shared coordinates. Split walls, columns, tags by level. We tick it on. Uh, because uh, it's a good practice to have uh, elements cut by levels. Hmm. We don't want to have too high walls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we can include steel elements like uh, joints and 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 uh, it's at welding, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, file header information name says for itself. We can add it to our IFC file if we want. Then we go to additional content content. Export to the plan view elements. If we want uh, floor plans exported together with room tax, then we click it on. Export linked files as separate IFCs. Um, I mean, uh, I rather not tick it because the 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 practice is that you export only your files and yeah. only your objects that you're responsible for. So if you linked something from other branch, you you don't export it at all. Mm -hmm. um, export only elements visible in view this one we click we tick and uh, if we want rooms as uh, IFC spaces then we also click this one and what does it mean export only elements visible in view this is in this view we have here mm -hmm. so and this is also good practice to create a view uh, defined for IFC export Mm -hmm. where I can hide categories that are not needed. For example, I'm sending model to coordination, uh, to beam coordinator. Mm -hmm. So he rather doesn't need a chairs or other furniture. So I just uh, switch off a uh, furnishing category and I have clean and nice and tidy view that I just um, export. Um, so this is a really good practice to mm -hmm. create own view for IFC export. Uh, let's go back in, export IFC. Oh, no. And uh, now it's gone away. Okay, whatever. Um, property set. Okay, this uh, here we will sit a little while. Uh, because, yeah, BIM, BIM is all about data. So, and this tab says how the data is uh, structured and how it can be structured. 
Um, first one, always unticked because it includes all Revit parameters into export. This creates a huge amount of data, <laughs> uh, a lot of data sets. Uh, IFC is going to be heavy and messy, so uh, we don't export it. If we want to export some Revit properties, then we will use one of these two. I will come to that. Export IFC common property sets. Uh, this adds like built-in IFC properties. Uh, connected to the element that we are exporting. Like for example, IFC door has their own uh, property sets called, for example, P set door common. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in that one, if I just show you quickly. So in those IFC uh, P set door common, we have those kind of properties. So fire rating, acoustic rating, is external, etc. Pretty handy uh, data that we probably either way have in Revit. Mm -hmm. So we can connect those, combine those two together. Mm -hmm. um, this is this one. Um, export based quantities. This uh, adds a property set with quantities. Uh, I as far as I know, most of IFC viewers have their own method of calculating quantities. Mm, yeah. So I, I would rather leave it unticked. Mm -hmm. uh, schedules as property sets. Mm. This is a way of adding uh, user-defined IFC properties to some categories. I could create a schedule for doors and mm. add... Uh, add a column with a, I don't know, um, is external or, or um, I don't know, material or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I could export it as a, as a property, uh, as a property in, in my IFC export. Mm -hmm. um, it is possible, but then if we have a multiple projects and everybody wants to have the same IFC, then we would have to share the schedule. Mm -hmm. And that is really easy to like delete, rename, right. Yeah. We do so. So that's not the optimal way to to uh, export um, property sets. Mm -hmm. So we leave it unticked, and we use those two. Okay. The first one, export user defined property set. So uh, often there are some requirements. What properties should be included in IFC? Uh, Often it is like required by the branch. Sometimes it's required by the building owner. Sometimes it's other branch that requires our input for them to work. And this is here we define what do we export. So we don't tick this one. We don't tick this one. Mm -hmm. All the thing we do here. Got it. And to do it, we have to go to our... Uh, Oh, maybe I can open this in a, in a text file. And this is where we define it. This is a default file from Autodesk. Mm -hmm. And it shows how it works and, uh, and some example. So this is the format, how we write it. So we write property set, tab. It has to be tabulator, not space. Property set name if this is an instance parameter or type parameter. And then what IFC element does, uh, IFC object does it relates to? Is it IFC door? Is it IFC window? Uh, wh whatever, whatever. It, and it can be multiple. Then we list in properties, property name one, property name two. Then we list what data type it is. And here we have all uh, supported data type, so area, boolean, uh, electrical, current, text, etc. So text is the most often used. And then name of the Revit parameters, parameter that we connect to one another. So uh, here is some example using a Kobe export. Mm -hmm. um, and here is the property I created. So I defined beam after dark as a property set. It's mm -hmm. kind of a property set is, maybe I should say it earlier, property set is in IFC file, this kind of tab. Mm -hmm. 
So property set contains multiple properties. Mm -hmm. So I will create a beam after dark property set that is a instance parameter and IFC element that includes all uh, elements in the project. Mm -hmm. So IFC element is above in hierarchy, uh, above uh, wall, door, etc. So I, uh, IFC element contains all under um, subcategories, mm -hmm. su subclasses. Um, and uh, yeah, so we have this one um, here. Um, so those are uh, user-defined properties. Mm -hmm. I could also, if I will create a project parameter called, I don't know, LOD. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I can use it. I can do it if we have time. Uh, so if I create a project parameter, uh, yeah, let's name LOD. Uh, it's an instance. Uh, yeah, let's be it a text, whatever. Um, yeah, let's give it to all. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, And if I give this window LOD 350 and uh, this wall 200. And now I want to say um, in my text file that I want an IFC parameter a D L O D in IFC. Um, this is a text parameter. Um, text and it's called uh, and in Revit it's called L O D. Okay. So you're setting up custom custom connections yeah. between IFC parameters or property sets and Revit parameters. Yeah. Got it. Cool. So I create a property set uh, with properties. I could also create another property set with some other uh, properties. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I save it, close it. Um, and um, yeah, maybe before I Uh, before I export, so let's talk about this one. And this is parameter mapping table, and this corresponds with common property sets. Mm -hmm. So if in my Revit I have, you remember those doors uh, data sets I, yep. I shown on the screen. Yep. So if I want like to have a fire exit in mm -hmm. my IFC, but in Re in Revit somehow my uh, my property for that is called differently and they don't match. So I can, in this document, I can specify that those two parameters are the same Got it. and they match. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I write in property set in IFC, like those uh, IFC uh, common property sets, uh, which are, uh, One more time, those. So uh, P set or common. Uh, I write fire exit because it is here. Fire exit is one of the properties mm -hmm. in IFC. Uh, and in Revit, my parameter is called is fire exit mm -hmm. because somebody called it like that and it stayed like that. Mm -hmm. If we design in other language, like in German or in Norwegian, and you have in Revit, you have names in Norwegian, mm -hmm. then it's no chance Revit will trans translate it. Mm -hmm. So you have to use those, this text file to uh, to map them together. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <clears throat> cool. Um, and the last one, level of details, just keep it low. Uh, it's... IFC, it's not for uh, rendering or games, so mm -hmm. uh, low detail is fine. Um, 
yes, let me just run through the setup one more time. Everything it is. Okay, and then we hit okay. And we have a file, export, replace, okay. And here it works. It will take, take a minute or so. So, so while that's exporting, um, we can run through it real quick. Uh, before you go to file, export, IFC, you want to make sure you go to file, export, IFC options. Uh, make yep. sure that your 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 um, data or property sets are are path and set up, and the attributes are set up the way you want. Um, mm -hmm. And then when you and then when you go to IFC export, now we were just ran through some of the modifications. You're using the the default coordination, I think, as your starting point. I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, uh, shirt coordinates. Yep. Uh, like, if you no, use I mean, shirt uh, the view, the the, the 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 oh yeah 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 the view attributes was the default uh, two by three uh, coordination right coordination um, view to to yes yes to, there we go and then you're taking that modifying it um, um, as as you walk through some of the examples there um, you know slicing by level uh, you know setting doing the custom parameter mappings if you want not having every mm -hmm. single export uh, every single Revit property export all of that good stuff and then we're mm -hmm. we're getting file export so now you've got a uh, and you're using a view that is dedicated for IFC export, so you can condition and filter that view. And then you click export, and now here we are. We have an IFC. Here we are. Yes. <laughs> that's uh, you're having that's, IFC. Now, now what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> now we basically open it and check if everything looks fine. Uh, so I'm using uh, Solibri. Uh, so you're that's... opening in Solibri. Um, maybe just yeah. for for folks who again aren't familiar with IFC at all. Um, what options do they have for sort of opening and checking it other than, you know, maybe importing it into whatever program they're using? I know Celebri is one. Um, Oof, what else? There's like <laughs> like a thousand, like yeah. DDS card, uh, Beam Vision, um, Tecla Beam site. Okay. Uh, I think Autodesk also has some IFC viewer, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure the name. Right. So there's like uh, many, many options. Most of them are free. Yeah. And, and I, I was only bringing that up because, um, you know, I think a lot, a lot of people like me included initially when I was first, you know, dealing with IFC files and, and figuring out is your initial thought is let me just import it into whatever program I'm using and then look at it to see how it looks. But, mm. but the import process does things, right? So you're not looking at, you're not necessarily doing a, a quality control check on the IFC mm. if you're importing it into yep. something else. Um, and so, so I think it's important to note that um, if you're doing this, you're being asked to do this, or you want to learn more about it and, and check what comes out of Revit um, or whatever program you're using, then using an IFC viewer, like you're saying here, which has been Vision, Celebri, go down the list, is probably your best bet because now you're actually analyzing the, the raw IFC. IFC data, not the IFC data that was manipulated by whatever import process you used. <laughs> exactly, awesome. exactly. And actually, uh, Celebri is also not the best way to view IFC data okay. uh, because... <laughs> So Libre is kind of too nice for the user hmm. and it tweaks this IFC data so that is more understandable, easier okay. to read, mm -hmm. but it doesn't show like the full structure of the IFC. Okay. So actually, if I want to like dive into uh, IFC structure, I'm using mm -hmm. Beam Vision. Okay. Um, and here we have, you see all the three, mm -hmm. like IFC project, site building, building story, Got it. walls that on the on mm -hmm. the stories standard wall and material layers. You have mm -hmm. all the whole IFC uh, tree structure. Right. Awesome. And now you can dig in and you can analyze the data yeah. as, it, as it was, you know, as it was exactly. exported. Yeah. And so here we have um, data for the exported data mm -hmm. for, the, for the IFC with the P sets for the common quantity mm -hmm. uh, maybe i can open so libre is gonna be easier yeah um and uh, mm -mm -mm. and i think i have done something wrong because i don't see our beam after dark uh, property set maybe it was overriding ah. the wrong one or something weird um, okay, let's try again. Uh, That's right. I think I think uh, I think for the sake of, of time, I think one of the things that yeah. I'd, I'd like to we've got you know five five, okay. five or so minutes um, is um, so now we have this IFC 
and and I think to to view. So even if you're getting IFCs from people, uh, you know, in, yep. the, initially you can use BIM Vision or Solibri or one of these programs to 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 open it and view it and understand the the setup, the attributes, all that other stuff. So then, uh, I guess the the last thing I kind of wanted to touch on um, is. Um, if you're receiving IFCs from folks and that's the only file type you're getting, let's say, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. you know, what, what are some, some best practices or things to understand, um, when you're trying to use that IFC file in a native program like Revit, um, as far as just, you know, the, the, whether you're importing, whether, yeah. you know, what, what just in general, um, you know, the idea is we've created this, this, this data, this data set that, you know, has geometry linked to it, so on and so forth. But maybe, you know, we need to use it now, um, you know, mm-hmm. in whatever our authoring tool is um, or other, you know, what 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 can you think of as sort of best practices to understand when you're actually going to now use this file in a authoring tool to do X, Y and Z to um, your project? I mean, the best is all is to use um, IFC as uh, as a reference. So without mm-hmm. editing it, because if I want to re-import IFC to Revit mm-hmm. that was created in some other tool, Mm-hmm. Uh, it might look okay, but data-wise, it's probably pretty messy. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, IFC is again this comparison to PDF is quite uh, quite handy because you you surely try to uh, reopen PDF in Word and how mm-hmm. it looks like. Right. Yeah, on the first side it looks good, but then <laughs> inside it's pretty mess. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and and that goes especially for a bigger projects. Uh, if if you have to re-import IFC into the native program, mm-hmm. then uh, then it's really high risk that you lose some data. Some data is wrong, mm-hmm. uh, translated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This mm-hmm. is a little bit of a drawback of IFC 2x3. In mm-hmm. IFC 4, they're working on improving that, mm-hmm. but we're still not there. Mm-hmm. So uh, IFC is best to use as like a reference, as uh, importing because you can attach also IFC to to Revit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then work on uh, on the IFC file. And if you want to request some changes, uh, then um, yeah, then you request the changes to the provider of that mm-hmm. IFC file. So so if you don't mind, uh, and um, showing sort of how someone could use the IFC as a reference instead of the full re-import uh, in Revit, is that is that something we could quickly show in a couple minutes here? Maybe maybe. Uh... Whether it's this file or just something else, because I'm, I'm, I think people are probably be interested in understanding that the difference there. Uh, yep, we can uh, we can try to open the, some IFC file if I have it. And then while while you're doing that. Um, um, a couple questions I'm just digging through here. Yeah. Hey, Conrad, do you have? Um, <clears throat> oh, uh, Joel is asking about the mapping process, and do you have to do it in Revit every Revit element? And I think we kind of answered that as we went through that you only necessarily have to do it once. Uh, you know, depending on mm. the variety of your Revit model. Um, and then uh, I think that was it. A couple people were. Oh, a couple people mentioned that. There are some uh, programs, uh, some PDF programs like Bluebeam that can open IFC models as well. I don't know how well they, how well they view the data, but um, I'm sure it views the geometry. Uh, I imagine. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's uh, actually never, never tried it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, you know what? I, I think uh, I, I didn't want to put you on the spot there, but I guess the the big the big thing I'm that, trying that to, I, yeah. The big thing that I wanted to sort of t- talk mm-hmm. about there is is when you're in Revit, uh, you know, it's if you if you import as IFC, it it does some things sometimes, um, and so you what you're you know it creates that that IFC RVT file, um, which is what you're saying where it actually gives you it's trying to convert the data back to Revit it's information, yeah. which is where you know that that's where stuff can get lost in translation. Mm-hmm. And so what you're saying is almost you're essentially linking the IFC file as a reference in this sense, right? yeah, is that, is that like like the same like you're using DXF or, or right. something, just, exactly. just like yep. like reference, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, so that's that, I mean, that's a great point. That's that's an awesome insight, and I think that'll help people because by default, uh, the way Revit's UI is set up and the way you typically would do it was you would immediately do the whole, 
you know, import, um, and then and then you're like, oh, cool, it made a Revit file. I'll just use this now to link into whatever <laughs> and do it. But realizing now that that Revit file is not the same as the IFC as far as the mm. data is concerned mm. is, I think, mm. the important mm. point. So, awesome, man. This is this has been great, Conrad. So I appreciate Thank you. I appreciate the time. I hope everyone uh, uh, took some value out of it. We talked about uh, you know what IFC is, why it exists. Uh, we ran through the process of exporting, um, you know, exporting from Revit, some of the things to look for. Um, talked about some viewers and talked a little about the uh, importing process. So uh, I really appreciate it. Um, uh, and uh, and everyone in the chat, I appreciate you guys. Conrad, uh, what's the best way that people can reach out to you and and, and, and continue the conversation? Um, just drop me an email on conrad.fugas at beamcorner.com or go come to come to our website, uh, beamcorner.com and you will find a contact us uh, page there. Mm-hmm. Write, write us an email. We always answer. And uh, awesome. yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, thank you, everyone, for, for joining us today. I appreciate it. Um, I'll put all the links that Conrad mentioned uh, in the description below, as well as the blog cool. post at bimafterdark.com tomorrow. Um, Conrad, thank you again. Thank you all for joining us thank live. Thank you very much. And, uh, and also thank you to Twin Motion for sponsoring this episode. Um, with that, uh, I'd like to bid you all adieu and and hopefully talk to everyone later so uh, have a great weekend and uh, and talk to you soon see you guys